Hello YouTubers. I am doing a US carburetor conversion kit on my Onan 4.0 gen set. This is a 1984, I believe, Onan. Uh, and so is my RV. And I've been having issues with the carburetor and uh, the, uh, whatchamacallit, the, the ethanol fuel sitting in the carburetor for long periods of time because obviously these things sit. So, instead of having to clean the carburetor every single time, which I just got done doing again, you take it apart, spray everything out, pull the jets, and just clean it, and then usually it runs just fine for quite some time after that. On mine, I've got to find a new electric choke because mine hasn't been working properly. The interior's all rotted out from age. So I gotta find a new one and get it put on there. But I threw a zip tie on here, holds the holds the needle in place so I can move the choke to where I need it to while I'm firing it up. Which is kind of a pain in the butt. Another thing and reason I, I mean a generator, you should push the button on the inside, it should fire up, right? So what I've done is I pulled the intake manifold, carburetor, and if you don't know how to do that, it's very simple. I'll give you a bird's eye view here. This is the fuel line coming into the back of the carburetor. You'll need a 9 16 and a 7 16 to take those apart. And you'll hold the, the 9 16 while you loosen the 7 16 and then that'll just pop right out of the back of the carburetor. This is the breather tube right here. It comes into the bottom of the carburetor flange. Back there is an intake port. Up here is an intake port. And right here is the throttle linkage. Those are, and, and then the choke cable if you have one. <coughs> That's the electric sender for the for the uh, electric choke. So you can unclip this clip. It just swings down. That's all it does. Swings down out of the way and then should slide the bar out. I just keep the clip on there so I don't lose it. That'll swing out of the way. Undo the fuel line and then four bolts, four half inch bolts two of those half inch bolts hold that cover on and you may or may not have another bolt where that slot is in the sheet metal that you can see there mine wore out years ago so it just sits there and rattles no big deal to me but see those two ears coming off There's one over there one over there those two ears that come off all you have to do is those are bolted directly down to the intake manifold. Take those two off first, pull your pull that cover out of the way, and then take the other two bolts out of the way, and then the intake manifold will just slide right out of there. Lift it and then slide it right out of there. Now, you'll wanna check your gaskets and make sure that they're okay for when you go to bolt it back down. If not, you need to make some, or good luck finding them on the internet. Now, what I'm doing today and I'll show you the, the finished product. But basically, this is the kit right here. I'm gonna put an inline on off valve. And the reason why I wanna do that is I don't trust, these guys say it's a draw system and it only sends gas when there's a draw, but I don't, I don't trust those systems, I just really don't. So, this is two pull. One goes to ground, one gets positive. Very simple, turns gas on and off. So, to explain an Onan to you really simply, when you press start, it sends electricity down this wire to the fuel pump, turning the fuel pump on. And then when the engine fires up, this stays on, keeping the fuel pump on. But when you let go, stop, stop sending electricity down through here if the engine's not running. Press stop, cuts the power to it. Same thing is going to happen when I install a three-way switch, it'll be one side will be fuel, one side will be propane. The propane side will send the electricity from this wire to the to the on-off switch that I just showed you, or it'll send it directly down to the fuel pump. It'll be extremely simple. I'm not sure where I'm going to mount it at yet. I might even crack into the cover here and cut a slot for it, maybe right in here. I don't know. Got to see what's inside there. And that's how simple that'll be. Then the gas will come in from there. Looks like, I haven't gone through the directions completely, but it looks like it goes into this regulator. 
It's got a purge on the back, a little push button purge. Goes into this, out through the hose that's in that kit right there to this valve, or maybe it comes off of this valve, the hose comes off of the valve. Like I said, I haven't checked the kit yet. This may screw directly onto that. And then it's got an adjuster there so that you can adjust your uh, propane feed directly to the motor. And this is a low pressure kit, by the way, just to let you know, it's not a high pressure kit. It's got a, they got two completely different kits for this. So, and then it plugs into this. This adapts to the top of the carburetor. See, we've got three holes, three holes. And then that plate comes off, goes on top of this. This bolts all the way down and, and that's the install. I mean, that's as simple as it gets, folks. Um, the majority of what I'm gonna have to do, obviously, they only give you the kit from the regulator to the carburetor. That's it, that's your whole kit. What you have to do to plumb into the propane on, on your RV or your application is up to you. You've gotta make that happen. So, with that being said, I will stop the recording here and uh, you'll see the rest uh, when it's attached to the carburetor, maybe, or maybe not, but at least I'll uh, do an update video at the very minimum. So, have fun out there in YouTube land. Like, subscribe, that whole bowl, you know what I'm talking about. Have a good one.